rights that people will have their rights protected. Mr. Speaker. Derek Paul. Oh. <laughs> uh, before, I, before I begin, sir, I just want to pick up on a couple of things that the Minister said during her speech. And um, one of them was that um, she talked about the vulnerable kids and, and how important it was that the organisations support that, those vulnerable children and find the best way of doing that. And nobody in this House is going to disagree with that. Um, the disagreement that we have as a party and as, and as a collective opposition, I guess, is the fact is the process with which um, the minister wants to achieve that. And the fact that we have, since day one of this, this um, new implementation process and all of the, the overhaul that, and the legislation going through the House that the, that the government wants to do, we have said from the start that we are, are concerned with the processes that the government is um, going through and um, how, on the one hand, the minister can stand up that has proven to be empty words um, uh, conv trying to convince us that everything will be okay with the data collection that specifically sir and then um, obviously the results are quite the opposite and one of the things that the privacy commissioner actually said in his report sir was that the government runs the very real risk of um, not only losing trust in the clients that want to use the services of MSD but actually the people of New Zealand losing the trust in the government and that's exactly what's happened sir um, the second thing that she, that she said, sir, was that none of it can be achieved if they don't have security. And that, what she was mentioning, the, 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 um, the, the, the data collection or the, or the system that they were using, and that's why she shut it down. And she said that none of it can be achieved if they don't have security. And if she's saying that today, sir, that means she must have known that that was the case previously. And so why has it got to this point in the first place? If she knew that the security was of paramount importance, if she knew the consequences of that security was breached, or if that security was questioned, uh, then why did she not go ensure that the ministry and all of her officials and, and everyone else throughout the ministry went through the, the processes that ensured that, not, that this situation did not occur, sir? I don't think that it's any coincidence, um, and I think it's, it's, well, I guess it's more of an irony, sir, that the, the, um, the day that um, the Privacy Commissioner released his report was the exact same day that there was a privacy breach that, that occurred. And I think that that just highlights the entire issue, and I think that it's, it's a very important issue that the entire opposition have been talking about for months, sir, and it's a good opportunity to speak about it. This, this whole entire um, situation, sir, is just a uh, culmination and it's a uh, manifestation of the utter arrogance of the government and the it establishes and it shows just how out of touch and disconnected they are with the reality, especially with um, the Ministry of Social Development and the Minister of Social Development on the provision of the essential services at the grassroots, sir. Uh, it's been mentioned before, um, but just a few weeks ago, Rape Crisis has um, come out and said that they're not going to accept any more funding if this data collection keeps going uh, because of the fact that they know that the most vulnerable people that they, they work with uh, will not give their data, they will not be able to provide effective services to those people. That's the reality, the day-by-day -day reality that these people on the ground are, d are dealing with, sir. And what this shows, what this example shows, and what the situation shows that we're talking about today is that the minister and the ministry and this government is so far out of touch with the reality of what's happening on the ground day, every day. The, 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 the entire premise of what, the, what um, the Minister stood up and said about data collection, and I'm sure what other members of the National Party have, be, have been given notes to talk about, uh, about um, the data collection, sir, is that no matter what they say, this entire thing is just, is just ideology. Because if we had a look at the actual facts of the matter, if we had a look at the consequences of where things go wrong and the processes where things go wrong because they have gone wrong already, you can, you, you can see that it's not based on fact. It's just ideology. And the biggest problem, the biggest problem this government has is that the data collection um, processes and the ideolo ideology with which they are uh, moving forward with is the absolute foundation of the social investment approach. And they are using the social investment approach, a carte blanche across the entire um, social services, and that in itself is based on ideology and not on facts. And what they like to try and hide behind what they like to try and hide behind, sir, is um, standing up in the House every day and saying how well they're doing with the targets, um, the better public service targets, 
how they're achieving them, and uh, rattling off a whole heap of information and data with no context whatsoever. And when you start digging deep down a little bit more into the better public service targets that they mention, um, you can tell that they are failing, sir. If this philosophy of the government is actually working over the last better part of a decade, then why are the most fundamental things that are inter intertwined into the social fabric of our country failing? I'm just going to list a few of them, sir. Youth crime is up. Homelessness is up. Child poverty is up. Youth unemployment, the neat rates, the neat rates are increasing exponentially. It's up. House prices and living costs are up. Domestic violence uh, numbers are up, and child abuse is up. So, if this philosophy was working, if this social investment approach was working, if this approach that this government has to social services and provision of social services was working, sir, then why are all of the fundamentals in the bad columns up? But do we hear about all that stuff? No, all we hear about are the targets, sir. And if the targets were working so well, then why doesn't this government actually get them audited? Why do they end up setting them themselves, reviewing them themselves, standing up in this house and saying how much they, how much they actually achieve? Um, today, sir, before I came into the house, because I um, preempted a little bit of a, uh, the urgent debate, I asked the library to um, gather just over the last eight or nine years, the number of privacy breaches or complaints that have been just reported once, just reported once. And over the last, and this is in the media, sir, so this is just the tip of the iceberg of what's happened. And you can see it's quite a large stack. And uh, it's in the vicinity of 40 to 60 over the last eight years. Now, if the government was very serious, taking it seriously, to start a collection, and ensuring an understanding like the, like the, the minister stands up and says, and understanding that the importance of the security of that data collection, with the history that the MSD has of not being secure, you'd think they'd want to get it right. Just in the last couple of minutes, sir, I'd actually like to um, go through the uh, most important part of the report that the Privacy Commissioner um, has released, and that's the conclusion. He has um, seven points there, and I'll just briefly go through a few of the most important ones. The first one he says, he says that the implementing of a significant new information gathering policy without sufficient evidentiary basis and without adequate consultation amounts to a serious deficit in the policy development process. That's the first one that he says in his conclusion, sir. The second one. Uh, my view is that the MSD has executed the collection prematurely without adequate, adequate consideration of the privacy risks involved and appropriate mitigation of those risks. The third one goes on to say, sir, that um, this policy that the government wants to implement is a new direction for the government. Um, it needs to pr proceed with caution. Um, and there is, again, an adequate de development process uh, through this entire process, sir. Um, and one of the most important, sir, and there's seven of them, but one of the most important was that um, it says that uh, the success of the MSD's policy is in jeopardy. This entire policy is in jeopardy. The reach of these consequences are not limited to MSD and could threaten individuals' overall trust in the government, which is what I was saying before, sir. And like I said before, it's a bit too late for that. <laughs> sir, um, there are a number of issues that, um, unfortunately, and I guess it's the most unfortunate part, is that New Zealand First and the other opposition parties have stated from the start of this entire process that we were concerned with um, the way in which the government was approaching um, the, the big changes that they want to make for the right reasons, that we had issues with the process, that we had definite issues with the data collection and the extent and the purpose of that data uh, being collected. And unfortunately, it has come to a head today, uh, this week. Um, we have had a privacy breach and we have had the Privacy Commissioner come up with some very, very serious concerns. This isn't a bad report, sir. It's an ominous report for the future uh, of um, the, the, the future direction um, that the minister and the ministry wants to take social services. Um, I think that um, the, the minister needs to sit back and have a, re, a real rethink uh, about the entire direction of, and in particular, of the social investment, but in, uh, in particular the data collection part. So, thank you. Mr. Speaker, the Honourable uh, Alfred Naro, is it? Just checking. Yes. Thank you. Um